Fly Me to the Moon is a good movie, but I'm not necessarily crazy about it. So let's talk about this thing. Now, since this movie has been out for almost a week now, this video will have spoilers. But if you don't want spoilers, head over to my shorts, TikTok, or Instagram and check out my one take movie review on this movie. But without further ado, let's talk about Fly Me to the Moon. So in this movie, we follow Scarlett Johansson's character, Kelly Jones, who is hired to help market the Apollo 11 moon landing. And while she's doing this, she of course meets Channing Tatum's character, Cole Davis, who is the NASA director on the project. And this kind of leads to them having, of course, a relationship and also potentially forming a backup plan or faking the moon landing if the real one doesn't work out. So let's talk about the good, the so-so, and the bad of this movie. As always, starting things off with the good, the first thing I have here is of course our two stars of the movie, Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. And the first thing I have to say about this movie is that it just simply does not work without Scarlett Johansson. In my opinion, she was the best part of this movie. She of course plays Kelly Jones, who is this master marketer and can pretty much sell you anything. So it was a lot of fun to see her take on this role because she did a bunch of little fun accents and different little personalities throughout this film in order to get people to buy what she was selling or buy into what she was doing. And I just think, in my opinion, it looked like she was having a lot of fun in this movie because she was a lot of fun to watch in this movie. She was charismatic, charming, and even though I wasn't the biggest fan of some of the things that they did with her character, her herself was just phenomenal, and every time Scarlett Johansson was on screen, which was of course a lot in this movie, I was having a good time. Then when you combine that with Channing Tatum, it's pretty hard to mess that up. They had great chemistry on screen together and Channing Tatum turned in a solid performance as well. And when these two were on screen together in this film, that's when I thought this thing was truly at its best and when it shined the most, in my opinion. Next up for the good, I have the humor. Now, the humor in this isn't your laugh out loud humor. You're not gonna be just dying laughing all the way through this movie, but the humor is very well timed in this thing. It didn't feel forced, it didn't feel like they relied on it. In my opinion, they had the perfect amount of humor for this movie. Now obviously a lot of the humor came from Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum going back and forth. That's just a given. It wasn't hard for them to be funny and have fun in this movie because they had such great chemistry on screen, as I said before. But my favorite character outside of those two was easily Lance, who was played by Jim Rash, because I thought he was so entertaining and so funny every time he was on screen in this movie. Now, Lance was the director that they hired to shoot this fake moon landing in this movie, and he was just a really fun character. He was obviously the comedic relief in this movie, just about everything that came out of his mouth was unserious and it just made me laugh every time. I really enjoyed watching him. And on a side note, really all of the side characters in this movie were really good. I enjoyed all of them, but Lance was definitely my favorite by far outside of Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. So shout out Jim Rash because I really enjoyed watching you in this movie. Moving on to the so-so, and the first thing I have here is that at times to me, it felt like the relationship between Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum's character kind of took a back seat to everything else that was going on in this film. I mean, in the first half of this movie, we very much had those rom-com vibes. They were building up this relationship between Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson, and we were having a lot of fun. But once we got to the part where they revealed that they were going to film and potentially fake the moon landing, that's where I feel like the relationship took a back seat to that plot. And once they got into that plot, it kind of felt like the relationship got a little bit stagnant in that part of the movie and didn't grow as much as I think it could have. And at the end of the day, it's not really a big deal. I just think that since this relationship was really one of the best parts of the movie, I feel like it should have remained a priority throughout the entire movie and not just in the first half, in my opinion. Now, obviously they did come back to this relationship at the end of the movie, but there was a big chunk of this thing where in my opinion, it just felt like the relationship wasn't growing like it was in the first half of the film. Next up for the so-so, I have what they did with the backstory of Scarlett Johansson's character. Now, a big part of her character in this film was this big secret backstory that no one else knew about. 
And throughout this movie, they mentioned it here and there, but it also built up some tension in her relationship because you were just anticipating when Channing Tatum's character would find out that she had this secret past and what this secret past was and that she had been lying to him all this time. But then when she finally revealed her past of essentially being a con artist, nothing happened. Channing Tatum's character was just like, okay, whatever, now what do we need to do to make sure this fake moon landing doesn't get broadcast over the real moon landing? And for me, that just felt kind of weird because throughout this entire movie, we we're anticipating this big moment of what was gonna happen when Channing Tatum finally found out about her past and just nothing came of it. So it kind of felt like a little bit of a letdown once we got to that moment. And finally getting into the bad, and the only thing I have here is that this movie was definitely longer than it needed to be. This movie had a runtime, I think, of like two hours and 12 minutes, but honestly, I think this thing could have came in at under two hours pretty easily. I mean, there was lots of scenes in here that kind of just felt like filler and nothing really happened. And then we got to the end of this movie and it just kind of felt like it kept going on and on and on and kind of took a while to finally end. There were multiple times at the end of this movie where I thought it was going to end and it just didn't. And there was also a couple of times during the film where you could definitely feel the runtime being stretched a little bit. So yes, I thought it was a good story and a good premise, and I definitely enjoyed this movie, but it 100% could have came in under two hours in my opinion. But overall, I still think Fly Me to the Moon is a solid movie. It's very much carried by its two main stars, but it also has some good side characters and a fun story, which makes it a movie that I would recommend. Those are my thoughts on Fly Me to the Moon. Be sure to let me know what you thought of the movie down in the comments, and as always, be sure to like like, subscribe, comment, get your easy apparel at shopeasyapparel.com. God bless, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.